talking about when you were growing up and when you were pl obviously playing for the team I as well. Spoke, I? Yeah, seventies, <laughs> eighties when you were playing. When the club's doing well, the whole city's on a buzz, isn't it? And, it, and yeah. the city goes through a lot. But yeah. when the, when the club's doing well, it elevates it above everything else, doesn't it? I think you, you, it's right. You know, you look at the dark days of Liverpool. You know, when we had problems with with Margaret Thatcher. Um, don't like to talk about it here neither, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, we what what did we have? There was the, we had the the worst um, um, amount of people out of jobs. Unemployment was rife. We had nothing. All you had is to get to Anfield or get to Goodison and watch our teams, and that lift you through the, the, the bad times. And, and you're right. Whenever Liverpool would win a cup or Everton win a cup, which thankfully they were then. People walk around with a smile on their face, but some of them it was, it was in a mess. The city was in a mess. You know, I remember the, 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 the riots in, down in Parliament Street, and, and that, that, that was just what everyone was going through. And all the, all, the only thing we had was football. And from you, for your perspective personally, to, to then become involved in that, obviously, as you said, it was an amazing thing. And then to see the club not so much going to decline, because obviously it's still one of the biggest sides in Europe, but during the 90s and, and the year 2000, seeing what the club was going through, that really must have hurt people, because it was such a badge of honour, wasn't it, being a Liverpool supporter? And it didn't, it, 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 that fell away seemingly very quickly. Yeah. And, and, and it made it all the worse, because as I said before, we were spoiled. 60s, 70s, 80s, we were the best. We were, we were the top notch, the best players, the biggest club, the, best, the more, more, more trophies than anyone else. And then all of a sudden, to like you know, going down to, we won the Champions League, which kept us going, you know, and uh, you know, a couple of FA Cups and, 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 and the UEFA Cup, in a mad, mad sort of way. When we won the games, it was ridiculous. And uh, um, you, you think we, we, we just like scavenging, whereas you know, year in year out, twenty odd years before we won, the, we won the Premiership. Who in the, in the li lifetime would have said that would have happened? No one. They, they thought you were mad. You know, in 1991, to say you're not going to win it now for another 20 odd years, or we still haven't. But it has, you know, and, and that's that's shown the decline of the club, management-wise. Poor, poor management, terrible management. And how does that hurt the people? The fact that not only has it been uh, no success, but most of the success has gone to to Manchester United. Well, <laughs> you know, Everton apart, you wouldn't. Know, you, in a way, you wouldn't mind it going to Everton to, to a certain degree, but Man United being, uh, you know, the, the, the way. It's it's gone from rivalry to uh, complete hatred, unfortunately, with, with with a lot part of a lot of the fans groups. Um, so that makes it that's made it even harder to say that you know Alex Ferguson plays that he knocked Liverpool off the pitch and you know he's on the brink of doing that in league in league matters. He's still a long way to go in the European Cup though. He's still got that magic five number, you know. What do the fans want now, John? Do they just want success? Do they want a share in the club? Do they want to see young players coming through? What is it the fans want? I think it's a combination of the three. You know, you want to see young lads come through. Um, you obviously want success, stability, and if by any chance the new owners who have got ears, you know, they're listening to, to what a lot of people are saying, you know, uh, become susceptible to, to, to letting the fans have a share, then that'll be a bonus. That'll be a massive bonus. How much power do the fans have? How much influence can they still have over the club? I think they've shown, you know, over the last five years or so, you know, under the X and, and Gillette regime, you know, how powerful they can become. You know, as I said before, Liverpool, you know, very militant city. Uh, not scared, scared, scared to shout, shout for ourselves, and we'll continue to do that. But, you know, um, these owners are, are going out there, they're talking to the fans, which is very, very important. You know, they actually did that in Boston, to be fair to them. You know, thus they're waiting to see what they're going to do with the um, the stadium, whether they keep it at Anfield or take it on, on, the, on Stanley Park. Well, that's what you see. But first and foremost, they, they said they're going to put it on the pitch, make it successful on the pitch. Because that's first and for, foremost, that's where, where 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 you bring your revenue in from, uh, and then they'll look at that down the line.